what are domain events and how can we use them to build a decoupled system. This is the topic of today's video, so let's dive in. I'm in the handler for the create order command and I wanted to highlight this part here where we are publishing the order created event to the bus. The bus in this case is coming from the rebus library and we are publishing to RabbitMQ. The problem with this implementation is that we are coupling the saving of the changes in the database with the publishing of the event to the message bus. This is interacting with two external systems and it's not atomic because any one of these operations could fail and we could end up in an inconsistent state. Let's see how we can use domain events to decouple persisting of the changes to the database from publishing messages to the message bus. I'm going to need an abstraction in my domain project to represent my domain events. So I'm going to create my primitives folder, which is going to contain some base types that we're going to use for our domain events implementation. So the first thing I'm going to add is going to be a domain event class. I can also make it a record or an interface. It's not really a critical decision. Let's say we want to use a record, for example. So I'm going to make an empty record, which is going to represent a domain event. One thing that could be practical is to introduce an identifier to our domain events so that we can correlate them with corresponding integration events when we introduce that concept in our application. I'm going to add a GUID identifier to my domain event to complete the implementation. And now let's try to actually create one. What we had in the create order command handler was the order created event, which is sent to the message bus. So this would be considered an integration event, which is different from a domain event. A domain event is scoped to your application domain, whereas an integration event can leave the scope of your domain or bounded context and interact with other components in your system. So let's go ahead and create an order created domain event in our domain project. So this is going to be the order created domain event. I'm going to make it a record and it's going to implement my domain event base class. So let's go ahead and do that. So record instead of class and it's going to inherit from the domain event base class. We're going to add the ID to the order created domain event and then I can pass it to the base constructor of the domain event base class. I'm also going to add the order ID to the order created domain event and I can use my strongly typed order ID to represent this. Because this domain event is going to be scoped to my bounded context, it's safe to use strongly typed IDs which are part of your domain. And let's see if I can represent another concept that is part of our domain. So I can go ahead here and add a new domain event. And this one is going to be the line item remove domain event. So let's go ahead and add that. This one is going to be raised when a line item is removed, obviously. And let's go ahead and make it into a record. And what I want to add is the ID, the order ID and the line item ID. I'm going to add the ID property for the domain event. Then I'm going to add the order ID representing the order and also the line item ID representing the line item that was just removed. I'm going to inherit from the domain event base class and I'm going to pass it the ID from our constructor. One thing to note here is how I'm naming my domain events. Notice that this is in the past, so line item removed, and also here, order created. So the name of your domain events or any events in general should always be in the past and representing what is the fact that just occurred in our domain. Now that we have our domain events, how do we actually use them? Well, we need to raise them somewhere in our domain. So I'm going to add a base entity class in my primitives folder, and I'm going to use it to add the concept of raising domain events. So I'm going to make this abstract. I'm just going to add a list that is going to hold my domain events. So this can be a private read-only list of domain events, and we can call it domain events. All right, so now I need a method that is going to allow me to add a new value to this list. So I'm going to add a protected method, which is only going to be callable from our entities. So this is going to be protected void raise, and we're going to pass it a domain event instance. 
and the implementation is very straightforward. You just add the fast domain event to the domain events list. I'm going to initialize this to an empty list so that we don't have any issues. And let's see how we're going to use this. I'm going to head over to the order class and I want it to inherit from our entity base class. The perfect place to raise the order created event would be in the static order create factory method. We can access the protected method on our order instance and we can say raise and we're going to pass in a new order created domain event. This is going to add this event to our domain events list. So let's pass in a new GUID for the ID and then the strongly typed order ID. This would raise the order created domain event inside of our domain layer and this would just append it to the list of domain events. We're going to tackle publishing a bit later. Let's also consider the remove line item method and our line item remove domain event. So here we would raise a new line item remove domain event and we can pass it a new ID, the order ID and the line item ID for the line item that was just removed. Notice that this is also easily testable. We can create an order instance, run the remove line item method, and then just check if the corresponding domain event was raised in our domain. This tackles raising domain events, but how do we actually handle them? There's a simple solution where we can use mediator for handling our domain events, or we could build something custom. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leverage mediator because I think it's very simple. So I'm going to add a NuGet package, which contains only the contracts for the mediator interfaces. It's called mediator contracts. So I'm going to install it in my domain project. And this is going to give me access to the iNotification interface, which I'm going to implement in my domain event base class. So now my domain events also implement iNotification and I can handle them using iNotification handlers. If I go up to the application layer, I can add respective handlers for my domain events. So let's go ahead and add the order created domain event handler. We're going to handle our domain event and we're going to move the publishing of the order created integration event into this handler. So this is going to be the I notification handler of the order created domain event. So let me add that order created domain event and we implement our interface. I want to take this part here from the create order command handler, which publishes the event to the bus and move it into the order created domain event handler. I'm going to make this method asynchronous. And of course we need the instance of the iBus from rebus. So let's go ahead and inject that from the constructor. And what's left is to just replace the order ID here with the one coming from our order created domain event. So I can say notification order ID value. And I can also remove the dependency on the iBus from my create order command handler. So I'm going to remove the unused field and remove the parameter from our constructor. What did I get out of this? The handler for the create order command is now only focused on creating the order and persisting the changes in the database. This is an atomic operation because we are working with a SQL database and it's either going to succeed or fail and there's nothing in between because we removed the extra step that we previously had of publishing the integration event to the bus. And then our order created domain event handler is equally simple. All it does is it takes the domain event and then publishes another event which represents an integration event and it is sent to the message bus. This helps us to decouple the core business logic of our application from the side effects which occur when we publish events. The last piece that we are missing is how do we actually publish our domain events? So if you recall, we added the domain events to a list in our base entity class and we are persisting the changes with EF core. We can use the save changes method in our DB context to publish the events. So I'm actually going to make one slight change to the entity base class and I'm going to expose a property to fetch the domain events. So let's say it's going to be a public property returning a night collection of domain events and let's just return the list of domain events that we have in our class. So now I can go into my application DB context and I want to override the save changes method to introduce additional behavior. 
So I'm going to override the save changes async. I'm going to add a step here to extract our domain event and then we can discuss how we're going to publish them. I'll create a variable that is going to hold the domain event and what we're going to do is we're going to access the change tracker, get the entries which are of type entity. We're going to select the individual entity entry which is going to represent our actual entity. We're going to filter them to only take the entities that actually have any domain events and then when we have our entities filtered we're going to select a list of our domain events but because we are dealing with a list that contains a list we're going to use select many to flatten this so let's go ahead and do select many of domain events and we end up with a collection of domain events now we need to figure out how we're going to publish the domain events so we have two options I'm actually going to make this asynchronous and I'm going to await the base call to save changes and we're going to return the result. So let me just return the result. So I said we have two options of publishing our domain events. So option one is publishing before we trigger the save changes and option two is publishing after we trigger save changes. There is a very big difference between these two options in the first case, if we publish our domain event before we call save changes, then our events aren't really a fact because no changes were persisted in the database. And if any of our events fail, it's going to also roll back our transaction and this could have unintended consequences. If we publish events after calling save changes, then we are dealing with actual events that represent a fact or something that has already occurred in our system. Of course, if any of our domain events fail, then we're going to roll back the entire request, but what changes is we get the persisted state saved in the database. In my opinion, none of these two solutions are ideal. You're choosing between a lesser evil, but if I had to make a choice, I would choose to publish my domain events after calling save changes. So that's what I'm going to do here. We're going to use the iPublisher from Mediator to publish our domain events. So we can just inject it in the constructor and I'm going to add publisher from Mediator and let's inject it. So now I can say after persisting my changes in the database, I'm going to iterate over the domain events in a for each loop and I can say publisher publish and we publish the domain event. Of course, we can also pass it the cancellation token. And this is then going to trigger our domain event handlers after we have persisted changes in the database. This solution is going to work, but it still has the drawback of if any of the domain event handlers fail, then we're going to propagate an exception that is going to roll back the entire request where actually your business logic was successfully completed and persisted into the database. Another solution that doesn't have the drawback that I just mentioned is to persist the domain events together with your application changes. This is going to be completely atomic and transactional because you are going to be working with only one system, which is your database, and then you would take your domain events after persisting them and publish them in the background. So this is pretty much the outbox pattern, which I did cover in a previous video, but I'm going to tackle it again with a more robust implementation this time. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, stay awesome.